Hello and welcome once again to what is one of our favorite programs here at Some TV, and that is I'd Like to Know. It's our favorite because we get to answer your Bible questions, we get to find out what is on your mind and in your heart, and it allows us to do what we like to do, and that's dig into the Word of God for the truths that are hidden there. My name is C.A. Murray, and I'm in the company of two distinguished gentlemen, uh, our founder and speaker and president, Pastor Stephen Bohr. Pastor, always good to have you here. The feeling is absolutely mutual. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> and and our, our, our newest addition, someone that we have, are learning to love and to appreciate very much, Pastor David Salazar. Pastor, again, good to have you here. Thank you for having me here. It's a blessing to be here with you and join the team. Praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor Salazar is kind of new. Why don't you tell us a little bit about him, Pastor? Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, I just got back from Ecuador, as you guys know. Had an evangelistic series there. Very successful. Praise the Lord. And uh, David is from Ecuador. That's right. The middle of the earth. (laughs) Uh, Of course, we were well acquainted with uh, Pastor Salazar. Uh, He was working in Florida. And um, he came here for a couple of symposiums. And uh, we're very glad that he decided to join our team at Secrets Unsealed full time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we look forward to great things. One of the positive points is that he's able to work in English and Spanish. Right. And then over and above that, he has a very solid theological mind, good, solid uh, belief in the Adventist message. And so, Pastor Salazar, we are glad that you're here. We look forward to working together and producing programming that will impact the world. Thank you. I'm very thankful to be here. The Lord has led me this way, so I'm, I know that this is where He wants me to be. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You know, Pastor, some, sometimes you meet people and you kind of like them right off, you know? <laughs> uh, uh, he, he's that way. Uh, we met a few, a few days ago when I, I got back from Panama, and uh, right away I had, had met him before uh, at another ministry, but I didn't know him, uh, <laughs> and so we kind of got acquainted. Uh, kind of like him, you know, like yeah. like his style, uh, <laughs> like you. his theology, and uh, so he's a he's a good fit. Yeah, I don't yeah. kind of like him. I really like him. <laughs> <laughs> well, praise the Lord. <laughs> when the boss likes you, you're in good shape, so it's quite all right. <laughs> Thank you. I like you both already too. <laughs> praise the Lord, Pastor. Why don't you open up uh, with us with uh, in prayer? Uh, then I got one or two things to go uh, to say, and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll pass it to Pastor Moore. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you once again, Lord, for allowing us to come together and to share from your word the answers to the questions that a lot of our viewers have. We thank you for giving us the the opportunity and the blessing to expose your word and to let the, the word of God, your word, speak to them and clearly answer the questions. Please, we ask that your Holy Spirit may lead us and that once again, you may be the one that teaches the truth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We've been talking about questions, questions. Perhaps you have a question that you would like us to answer, to wrestle with a little bit. You can send your questions to TV at sumtv.org. That is TV at S-U-M-T-V dot O-R-G. And we will get to them just as soon as we possibly can. As we say weekly, our list is rather impressive. It's getting longer by the day. So if you don't hear your question right away, stay with us, stay by. We will get to it, we promise. And we also make you this promise that we will give you the answer, if indeed an answer can be found from the Word of God. Uh, we don't want to give you man's opinion or my opinion or pastor's opinion or pastor's opinion. We want to give you what the Word of God has Amen. to say. We want to give yeah. you the Word of the Lord. And so we promise to do that from the Word of God. If an answer can be found, by the grace of God, we will find it and bring it to you. So patience is a virtue. We'll get to them, and we make you that promise. Pastor. Amen. Yes. Uh, The question that we have is very interesting. Uh, It comes from Africa, and uh, this is the way it reads. Thanks for your service for Jesus. I have a problem. I am working in a company in Africa where nearly all and every workers you, uh, use the opportunity to steal money from the highest of them to the lowest, which makes it hard for me to work in such an environment. It made me more, more confused when I see those who practice these evils 
are accepted in many of our churches, <clears throat> SDA, especially when they are giving their large amount of money which they got through, uh, through theft from different government projects. My concern is that how do I get myself out from these situations? Um, so basically, this is uh, <laughs> a question about stealing from the government to get to give to the church. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so the big question is, uh, what do we have to say about that? <laughs> well, I, I've had the privilege of, of, of ministering in Africa on several occasions. There is, in some places, a culture of, of theft, particularly when it is done uh, against the government, it's not thought of as theft. Mm -hmm. uh, it's thought of almost as liberating funds to do to someplace else. Uh, so there is in some cultures, and, and I, we don't want to castigate a whole continent, but there are in some places this idea yeah. that stealing from the government is not stealing. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and so, and if you steal from the government and give to the church, it's even better. You sort of you sort of sanitize the, the theft, yeah. you know, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, the Bible doesn't still say, steal ye from Caesar and give to God. <laughs> very, very true. Um, the first thing one has to do is make sure that you are part of the solution and not the problem. Mm -hmm. You can't always control what others do, but you can always control what you do. You don't have to be part of that. Um, so... The first thing you want to do is make sure that your hands are clean, that you are right with God, and that you are not touching the unclean thing or part of an unclean thought or a cabal. You're trying to do the best you can uh, with what is entrusted to you and to be honest uh, with that. You shall not steal. Now, as to the situation, I leave that to you, Worthies, too. To well, I have with. maybe just a thought about this. You know, it's, it's what the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6.10, the, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So in some ways, we can see that those Adventists who are stealing from the government, it's really uh, because they love money. And we understand that that is, as Paul mentions, the root of all evil. And not only that, the end result, unless they repent from that, will be eternal damnation. I mean, they're going to be lost because it will not be, uh, they cannot keep the faith, the pure faith, knowing or holding to this sin of stealing, mm -hmm. even though it may seem that it's okay to be bribed or to, you know, have uh, money that uh, is easily accessible or because everybody else does it, it may seem okay to them. It's not really what Adventists should be known for. We should be beacons of truth, of honesty, of transparency, and, uh, you know, the, I think the admonition here that Paul is telling us and, and we need to remember is that if we uh, perhaps don't share with them that that love of money is going to cause them to err from the faith, um, you know, they, they need to really remember. Maybe this friend uh, from Kenya, uh, from, is it Kenya or uh, from Africa? We don't know exactly where he's from, but wherever he's from, you know, maybe to share this principles of the Bible and with them and, mm. and warn them that unless they repent, they're going to be erring from the faith. You know, some people live by the, uh, the wrong principle that mm -hmm. uh, we're supposed to be like Robin Hood. It's okay to steal from the rich <laughs> as long as you give it to the poor. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I want to read this statement uh, where Ellen White is commenting on the commandment that says, thou shalt not steal. Uh, this is from uh, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 309 pretty embracing. Uh, this is the Eighth Commandment. She wrote, both public and private sins are included in this prohibition. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Eighth Commandment condemns uh, man-stealing and slave-dealing and forbids wars of conquest. It condemns theft and robbery. It demands strict integrity and in the minutest details of the affairs of life. It forbids overreaching in trade and requires the payment of just debts or wages. It declares that every attempt to advantage oneself by the ignorance, weakness, or misfortune of another is registered as fraud in the books of heaven. 
Hmm. That's pretty embracing, pretty embracing. It, it, all dishonesty, in other words. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it reminds me of the story of Achan, um, where, hmm. you know, he stole uh, things from Jericho. God had, had reserved these things for the service of the sanctuary. Yes. It was the first city that they came to in Canaan that mm -hmm. they conquered, which was really the tithe of the land. Everything was to be given to God's cause. And this individual, Achan, you know, he took several things for himself. Uh, by the way, I think that this commandment would also involve um, not taking, not, not, not returning the tithes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it would be included in this because uh, it would be stealing from God. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I think that uh, the answer to this question, in fact, I know the answer to this question is that it is always wrong to steal yes. in all circumstances. Yes, yes, yeah, definitely. Ellen White says in Desire of it, uh, remember this quote from way back in college, no deviation from strict integrity will meet God's approval. Uh, so that's in all your business dealings, not, uh, you know, giving less than is expected, going to work and uh, punching in late and coming in early or punching in early and coming, you know, that kind of thing. Um, sh putting your finger on the scale when you're measuring out things, you know, <laughs> no deviation yeah. from strict integrity to meet God's approval. Exodus 23, verse 2, uh, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Even though mm -hmm. everyone around you is doing it, that mm -hmm. does not uh, sanitize it. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 you cannot be a part of that. Sometimes it's, it's you know, you have a job uh, you just have to be the Daniel there. You know, yeah. you have to, you've got to sort of, and sometimes doing right will cause you to get into trouble with those who are doing wrong. So that is to be expected. Uh, yet uh, you have to do right. And of course, your, your ultimate uh, thing, you can you can quit, but it, you can't always just give up a job. Yeah. You know, you can't just walk away. But you have to stand for Christ, uh, even though those around you are doing evil. Hmm. You know, and, and another important thing is, take, for example, Daniel that you mentioned. Um, he worked undoubtedly in this type of environment mm -hmm. that we find in right. this question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that he lectured everyone there, but they could see a difference in the way that he managed things. Yes. You know, maybe we can just read a verse that we find in Daniel chapter <clears throat> 6. Um, after he's delivered from the lion's den, um, yeah, there was Daniel one. speaks yeah. to the king. And um, let's see, this uh, would be in verse, uh, let's begin at verse 20. And when he came to the den, this is the king, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually, it's interesting the opinion that uh, the king had of Daniel, mm -hmm. been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths so that they have not hurt me. And now comes the reason. Because I was found innocent before him. Yes. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. And so very clearly, Daniel was honest in all of his dealings, not only with God, but also with the king and with everyone that he worked with. And sometimes, as we said, uh, with Joseph, sometimes turning your back on evil can get you into hot mm -hmm. water. It can. But uh, the same God that uh, is with you will be with you in the hot water, particularly if you're standing up for righteousness. Absolutely. Uh, and, and deliver you. And the Lord wants his people to shine. You know, Daniel, as you mentioned, Pastor Borg, uh, he's an example of that type of person that had no fault. They couldn't mm -hmm. find anything wrong mm -hmm. in his behavior. There was nothing he could, they could, you know, even they, though they digged, I'm sure they tried to look for anything that could, yeah. uh, you know, look at his character as, as unjust, immoral. Perhaps he stole something. No, he, they couldn't find anything. The only thing they could find him guilty of is being loyal to the Lord. Right. So <laughs> that shows you where we will ultimately be tested upon, you know, and you'd yeah. rather be faithful to the Lord than to, you know, even if your boss is an Adventist and is telling you to do this or to, you know, cover his, you know, this deception, you need to be strong and say, Lord, I'm not going to go against your word. I'm going to stick, stick to what the truth is and what the Bible Amen. wants me to do. So, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hope we answered that thoroughly. I think that was a good answer. Uh, sometimes we, we find ourselves in situations that are going to test our faith, test our mettle in the Lord. Uh, they're not going to be easy. 
But when you stand for the Lord, you have the privilege of knowing that the Lord is standing with you. Amen. And um, so we commend that to you. And hopefully that is of help to you. Um, our next question from John comes from the Bahamas. And uh, he's from Long Island in the Bahamas. I've been to the Bahamas. Uh, uh, my sister-in-law uh, taught there for many, many years. My wife's sister. Uh, was Christ manifesting himself in an angelic form while he was commander of the angels? Is this why Satan thought he could be equal with Christ? Does the spirit of prophecy mention this? I am sure that I had heard something uh, some time ago, but I cannot pinpoint uh, the source where or where it actually is. All right. Uh, let me start answering this question with what you find in Revelation 12, you know, verse 7. It's a very uh, well-known verse from the book of Revelation. And there it says the following. It says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. So we know that Christ is the one he's speaking of, and this is Michael. His name, before coming to earth as our Savior, in the Bible, is, he's called Michael. And Michael uh, is also called the archangel in the Bible as well. So the, the, the idea that Christ had um, um, another name that, or another, I won't say angelic form, but he was the commander of the angelic hosts. And he was there as Michael, whose name means one like God. In other words, his essence, he is, of course, God. Uh, he was a creator of all things. So in that sense, he was the linked to, to the angels by being the archangel, the one that was like God. And with that name, Michael, that is the connection there. But uh, I wouldn't necessarily see that he was... Uh, seen by the angels as one that was created or nothing like that. They knew that he was God. Now, Satan, Lucifer, it is true that he, in Isaiah and in Ezekiel 28, uh, speaks of how he fell from heaven. And then it mentions there that he wanted to be like God. In other words, he wanted to be like Michael. He wanted to be in that same element and or the same position as Jesus was. Uh, but um, this is probably where, where I think that we have to be careful not to make him think that Christ was an angel. He was not an, you know, an angel like, like the other angels were created. He is God, and his only name there is Michael. So that probably... But what else do you guys have to say about this? <laughs> I think you have much more to mention. I had a teacher in the seminary mm -hmm. who had a great impact on me. I think he had three PhDs. He was a leader of a self-supporting institution in France. Very humble, dro drove around campus on a beat-up Volkswagen Beetle, uh, but extremely intellectual. His name is Carson Johnson. Uh, we have several of his books that we carry here. Mm -hmm. uh, tremendous philosopher. Mm -hmm. And uh, he provided some significant information that Christ, before he came to this world, uh, had assumed the position of an angel, the commander of the angel hosts. Mm -hmm. And that's what led Lucifer to be jealous of him. Mm. Uh, Lucifer was not jealous of the father. Right. Because the father is the absolute king of the universe. But he was jealous of Jesus. Now, who do we find our rivals? Who are our rivals? You know, I would not consider that um, David, uh, that what's his name, um, the owner of Amazon, Bezos, yeah. uh, Jeff you know, Bezos. I, I would not consider him to be a rival in business <laughs> because we're very different in terms of uh, our position of equality. Right, of course. We find our rivals among <clears throat> those who are on the same level as us. Mm -hmm. And so Lucifer, you know, uh, Ellen White tells us that, uh, you know, God consulted Jesus in the creation of the world. Mm -hmm. And we're also told in Patriarchs and Prophets that the Father placed Jesus to be the commander of the angel hosts. Right. And uh, so Lucifer was filled with jealousy. Well, you know, why, why does he get special privileges that I don't get? Mm -hmm. That was the original reason. Mm -hmm. the, no, we can't say reason, but that's the, uh, the issue, issue that led to mm -hmm. the controversy. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and so he believed that Jesus had assumed the position of an angel. And, um, you know, just, just here in Daniel chapter 3, we find something very interesting that seems to indicate that. Uh, it's the story of the three young men that were thrown into the lion's den. Uh, you know, when Nebuchadnezzar sees the fourth individual in the furnace, uh, it's interesting how he identifies him. This is in verse 25 of Daniel 3. Look, he answered, this is the king, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Mm -hmm. But then later on in the chapter, in verse 28, the same Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. says, Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. Yeah. So who was the Son of God in the furnace? Yeah. In, in Nebuchadnezzar's estimation, it was, it was the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know from Daniel 12, verse 1, uh, that you mentioned that uh, Michael right. is the one that is being referred to, mm -hmm. Michael the archangel. Angel. And also, Pastor, you're right. And uh, there is a, another place in the Bible where Michael or Jesus is called the angel of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he did take that position, as you mentioned very clearly, as the commander, as an angel, as the archangel, um, <clears throat> never really giving, of course, his, his, his position as a son of God or as equal with God. But he lowered himself, in, if you can use right. that expression, right. to be as... As, as equal as possible with the angels. So, yeah. yeah. And that's why Michael, you know, it's his name uh, before he came to, uh, you know, as uh, he came as a man to, 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 for, to, the, to yeah. the world. And his, and his name, the name Michael means who is He's like, like God. God. Right. God. Right. Uh, you know, this reminds me, being that we're talking about different names that are given in the Old Testament, he's also called the commander of, of, the, of the hosts of the Lord. Mm. Uh, in Joshua chapter 5. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I was waiting for you to stop talking about so Joshua chapter 5. I've got it right here. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you the privilege. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm at verse 13. I think that's where you probably begin. Uh -huh. um, and the point is, and I guess I should read it very quickly. And it came to pass, let me look at my time. It came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite of him. And Joshua went to him and said to him, are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I am now come. Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, what does my Lord say to a servant? Um, then the commander of the Lord's host said to Joshua, take off your sandal for uh, off your foot for the place where you stand is holy. Even though... Um, the, the term angel is, is used whenever Christ steps in, it's, it's known that you're dealing with God. Mm -hmm. uh, one, angels don't accept worship. Uh, you, we find that from Revelation 22. So um, he knew that he was dealing with, with God. And, and Christ always, when he steps in, is, is revealed as, as God. Mm -hmm. uh, not as an angel per se, but as, as God, and it is recognized here in Joshua. Uh, maybe you have another take on, on that or something to add, Pastor. The only other place where that identical expression, commander of the Lord's hosts, is found mm -hmm. uh, is in Daniel chapter 8, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where the little horn is attempting to usurp yes. the place of the commander of the host. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it says in uh, Daniel chapter 8, verse 11, he even exalted himself as high as the prince of the host. It's not translated the same way, but is the commander of hosts. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so what Satan attempted to do in heaven, he does in Daniel 8 through the little horn, yes. which yeah. means that the little horn is the Antichrist <coughs> in the sense that is the, the, the emissary mm -hmm. of the enemy of Christ well said. Uh, who coveted the position of Jesus in heaven. Hmm. Excellent, excellent. So, He's uh, also called the angel of his presence. In, Jesus, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so he, you know, Jesus is referred to with many names in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Michael, the commander of the host, the angel of his presence, the I am. That's mm -hmm. another name in, in Exodus chapter 3. Mm -hmm. And we know that was Jesus because in John 8 verse 58, Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Yeah. And those who were present picked up stones to throw mm -hmm. at Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. Yeah. So they knew who he was claiming to be. Um, I think it's an interesting question, uh, talking about manifesting himself. But whenever Christ, um, can I use the term, showed up, they knew they were dealing with God mm -hmm. uh, and not an angel per se. And of course, to be the commander of the angel does not, angels does not mean you have to be an angel per se, but that you are commander of the angels, you are the leader of the angels. Uh, Christ is still, yeah. is still God. Well, you know, uh, Jesus assumed a human position on earth. He didn't cease to be God. Mm -hmm. right. And so mm -hmm. when he assumed the position of commander of the angels, he did not cease to be God. Precisely. Mm -hmm. so, so in other words, uh, you know, his, the descent of Jesus did not begin when he came to this earth. Exactly. In heaven, he had already subjected himself to the authority of his father. His father named him and said, you're going to be the commander of the hosts. Mm -hmm. And he accepted the commission. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so subjection to God's authority is not inferiority. That's the point. You know, some people say, yeah. well, if I, if I have to take orders, then I'm inferior. No, no, no. That's, that's the way human beings think. Mm -hmm. That's not the divine way of thinking. That's mm. actually the Satan's way of thinking. You know, he yeah. was not willing to be content with the position that the Lord had given him, even though it was the most exalted position of a created being. Yet he was, that was not enough for him. He wanted something more. And we have to be very careful to uh, not follow the same path. You know, we, we don't want to either surrender or serve the Lord and realize that if he places us in a position to be under someone or in a position of servants or whatever it might be, we might not, you know, feel that we have to not be happy with that position and just want to, you know, take over and not be willing to submit ourselves to, to whoever the authority might be. So. Yeah, his, uh, his great sin was upward mobility. <laughs> <laughs> upward mobility. Indeed. Right. He could not be God. God is creator. He was created. Correct. There's simply no way to cross that barrier, mm -hmm. to cross that line. Amen. He Amen. was created. Amen. So he could not go into the councils of, of creation because he had no ability, no ability to, to create. Good question. And we thank Amen. you, John, Amen. for it. From the Bahamas. We praise the Lord for that. Amen. Well, as we look at the clock on the wall, our time has fast slipped into eternity. We allow you to uh, encourage you to keep on studying the Word of God. Keep on reading. Send in your questions. We'll be glad to answer them until we see you again. God bless you. Be well. Be safe.